Being on the front lines in the fight to educate the next generation is tough. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with important updates, encouragement, and connection. Welcome to the Institute Leaders Lifeline. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Institute Leaders Lifeline. My name is Mike Sinclair, and I'm Deputy Superintendent of School Support at the Charter Institute at Erskine. And I'm so glad to be able to spend a little bit of time with you today talking about leading with passion. That's really the series we're in. We kicked off with two outstanding interviews. First of all, with Representative Shannon Erickson, who's the Chairman of the Education and Public Works Committee in the South Carolina House. and Senator Greg Hembry, who is chairman of the Senate Education Committee here in South Carolina. Both gave tremendous uh, perspectives on what education can be, what the vision is that they have, shared a little bit about themselves on a personal level. I hope that you'll go back and listen to both of those. They are really landmarks, they're, they're, they're road marks uh, for what we have coming up here in our state in the next few years. Uh, I'll reference a couple of things that uh, Senator Hembry talked about in this podcast. So love for you to go back and check both of those out. Before we get into that work, though, let me just remind you, if you are an institute a school leader, there are two dates that we've been talking about. They're rapidly coming up. The first is a chance to gather with other school choice options, private schools, home schools, other charter school leaders, all kind of different school choice options in Columbia on January 25th. It's the school choice week rally. It's a great chance for you to be there so you can be part of something bigger. You know, often we uh, get caught up in uh, charter schools as our as a leader and even our students. And we, we think the school is small and our uh, footprint in our state is small, but really you're part of a giant group of people. In, in, in just the Institute, we have over 23, almost 24,000 students uh, so you're not alone. This is a great chance to come and join and see what's there, build the excitement, hear from some of our state leaders speak. I'd encourage you to bring maybe a, a staff member or two with you, some students with you so that they can see the world is bigger than just your building. Also, February 9th, February 9th will be our Institute uh, Leaders Meeting here in Columbia. Uh, we've already had the registration out. A lot of you, I think I think we're already up to about 75 people coming, and that is so exciting. Uh, we've got lots of great things planned that have been coming to you via email, so I won't hash those out here, but hit those two uh, opportunities. We'd love for you to be in Columbia and, and join with us as we learn and share and uh, grow those relationships together. Now, on with today's episode. Part of leading with passion is creating a climate in your organization, creating a climate, not just uh, what things look like in your building, not just your policies and procedures, not just um, the events you have in your building, but collectively, it's a climate. It, it's much like you can talk about the climate of uh, an island in the Caribbean. It's not just the amount of sun or rain or temperatures. It's a big picture. And it's quite frankly what attracts us to go to islands in the Caribbean. It's the climate. It's an attractive climate. Well, well, your school or your organization needs to be the same. You need to have an attractive climate. You need to have a climate that people and students, specifically students, want to come to. Uh, employees want to come and work there. Uh, you know, when someone walks into uh, a school, um, a lot of times when you're a good school, you hear people say, God, it just feels different here. Well, that always begs the question, well, what makes it feel different? What, what is different about it? And a lot of times the explanation you hear from those visitors is, I don't know, it's just different. Well, that's the difference you as a leader want. Well, where does that start? Well, that starts in you. That starts within you as the leader, your passion. You communicate that to your organization in your words, in your actions, in your um, emotions, what you bring to the table. You communicate the climate in how you present yourself. And through that, you are going to be uh, impacting those around you, students, staff, parents, that onion keeps going out. You know, uh, Dr. Missy Brakefield presented today in a staff meeting uh, this morning, a book, uh, The Coffee Bean, and really talked about how, I won't go into all the analogies, but the coffee bean analogy is, the coffee bean is a single small thing and it gets put into boiling water. Well, it doesn't get changed necessarily itself by the boiling water, it permeates into the water. So it changes an entire pot of water by one being going out. 
you as a leader have to be that. You have to be the thing that is not changed by the boiling water. You have to be the internal piece that then permeates out and changes the water. Change your climate, build the climate. And that is so important. That's so important. And you are the core of doing that. So let's talk a little bit about it. Um, when we're looking at why uh, this topic really came to me, I'm going to be honest, we had a new school this opening in South Carolina, um, and the leader uh, came in and talked to us, Dr. Michael Gordon Smith, and he was talking to a group of us here at the Institute, and he was going through some pre-opening questions he had because he's moving from Arizona to South Carolina to open up, and he's just learning about the climate of uh, or the environment, let's say, to keep it separate from the topic of our state. And one thing he was talking about was hiring good people, hiring good staff. And, and as we talk through that, it really reminded me of, uh, of, of the predicament a lot of school leaders are in when they're opening a school. You're selling a climate that's, that's not there. They can't walk into Dr. Smith's building and feel the climate. They can't really see the climate. He's selling a vision of his climate. So as a leader, I'm gonna stop and ask you a question. Do you know the climate that either you have created or you will have created or you in the future are working towards creating? Can you articulate that? Can your staff members articulate that? Because if they can't or you can't articulate the climate you're trying to create, then you need to pause and you need to figure that out. You need to prioritize that because there's a lot of fires to put out. But the way that your staff puts out those fires, the way your students come into the school to, to work within the building is all put in the framework of the climate you've created. So what climate are you trying to create? And if you don't know, I would say spend some time and flesh that out and then look to see are your behaviors are your words, are your attitudes parallel with creating that environment? Are your staff and students mimicking the environment you want them to, to work within? The next thing that really brought this to my attention is just a hot topic that we need to work on as leaders and prioritize is, is recruiting. Is recruiting employees. Well, we all know the state of um, hiring is at an all-time um, a, a tough situation. I don't know the best way to even describe it. It's, it's almost like a war out there. You're trying to fight for these employees. Well, I'm going to put this in front of you. Are you creating and selling your climate to these applicants to where your school or your organization is a destination? Is it a place that they're going to? Is it a place they want to go to? Are you their Caribbean island for going back to our original analogy. Because if not, and you're just a stop along the way, then you need to make sure that you find the people that want you, that, that are seeking you out as your destination. You're not just um, one stepping stone in what they're doing. So that was very true when we had, uh, as leaders, we had uh, Ashley Story and Elizabeth West talk to us about the do's and don'ts of hiring the um, strategies of hiring talented staff. And one thing that really came out uh, in that conversation or in those presentations for me was don't look at short-term incentives to recruit people that are gonna be invested in your organization on long-term commitments. I'll say that again. Don't use short-term incentives to attract people for long-term commitments. For example, if you're trying to sell your organization based on um, an extra signing bonus or a stipend, or you're gonna give them an extra planning period once a week, or, or whatever those are, you could probably list a, 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 a 10, 20 of those if you wanted to. Not saying that those are wrong to attract interest, but if you're selling your school, if your selling point is these short-term things, then don't be surprised when someone else offers more of that short-term incentive and they go somewhere else. You, you can't put all your eggs in the short-term basket. You have to sell your school based on outcomes, based on programs, based on this 
package of what is your school climate. You want them to be there because of who you are, who your organization is, not based on these short terms. The short terms get them in the door, but you got to sell your climate. That's where the magic is really going to happen. Again, you need to be focused on the big picture, the end game. You need to be able to let your students and your staff and your parents do the talking for you. You need people to walk in for an interview and go, this just feels different. This is where I want to be. And that's when the magic happens. So as a leader, do people say that to you? Do they tell you it feels different? Do you find students coming in and they're like, wow, this is you fill in the blank? If not, then start asking those questions and be humble enough to listen to the answers because your school climate is what's going to make a major difference as you lead with passion. Now, I'm going to go to Senator, Senator Hembree's uh, episode from last week. There's so many nuggets in there. I, I, I listened to it just again this morning. Lots of nuggets in there, but right about the 27, 28 minute mark, I'm going to give you a little nugget here. He's talking about rural education and he's talking about how do, how do we transform rural education? And one nugget in there, it's a, it's a decent size, a decent length period of that episode. But he says, we need two things. He said, actually, if I could wave my magic wand and have two things, he said, one is we need to prepare exceptional school leaders. We need to prepare exceptional school leaders. He says, particularly at the principal level. And he goes on to talk a little bit about that, but that's one. Prepare exceptional school leaders at the principal level. And the second is, we need to have teacher preparation that is more like a doctor than a lawyer. Now, let me tell you what he meant by that as he goes through. And I'm gonna summarize this. So you need to listen to his words, but he says, a, a, a lawyer learns from lecture and Socratic style teaching. He said he was lucky enough to have some really good mentors that helped him learn how to actually uh, operate in the courtroom, hands-on in the environment of the courtroom. He says a doctor, they're going to clinics, they're working with patients on the job, they're out in the field, they're doing the work. And, and his, his point was, that's what we need to be doing with teachers. Teachers need to be in an environment where they're learning on the job. You got to have classroom and knowledge for, for sure. We're not discounting the, the higher education impact, but the magic happens in the classroom. And, and we shouldn't be surprised that the, a new teacher comes out of those lecture typically style classrooms without as much hands-on um, experience in the classroom. And and wonder why they can't deal with discipline, wonder why they can't deal with the unmotivated student, wonder why they can't uh, work with a student that has um, some kind of learning disability. It, if they haven't sat with those students and worked with them, why is that surprising for us? You can't learn that when you're sitting in a classroom writing lesson plans with other college students that are much like that teacher. They gotta be in a diverse situation. But here's where, here's where all that loops into what I'm talking about today with climate. What better place to train new teachers and to train inspiring principals than in a high quality school? So as a leader, what are you doing with your new teachers? What are you doing with maybe some of the teacher prep programs at the universities and colleges in your area? Are you going to them and saying, hey, I'd love for your new teachers to come in and do practicums, to do student teaching, to come in and just shadow us for a little while. If you're not doing that, you're missing a chance to really touch the key. Because as a principal, your teachers are really where the magic happens. And if you're at a district level, then your principals are really where that magic happens for you. And if both of them are essential to our education, increasing in success and increasing in quality, then you as a leader need to be figuring out how do I create a climate that gives these two people, teachers and principals or aspiring principals, the chance to learn, the chance to experience, the chance to feel what climate should be in a high performing school. So not only do you have a chance to build your school or your organization, you have a chance to tap into the future. You're building the future of education by training those new leaders, those new teachers that are coming through. I just heard a quote today, this morning, in a, in a session I was in, and it's by Jack Welch, the former CEO of General Electric. 
And it goes like this. I'm going to read it to you. A leader's job is to look into the future and see the organization not as it is, but as it should be. A leader's job is to look into the future and see the organization not as it is, but as it should be. It's a quote by Jack Welch. So my question to you as I wrap up, do you know what your organization should be? Have you thought about that climate? Have you thought about how all those pieces come together? Like I said at the beginning, we, we love the climate of a Caribbean island, but it's not just the temperature. It's not just the sun. It's not just all of those independent variables. It's collectively. So do you know what your organization should be? Do you know what that climate should be? Does your team know what your organization should be? Does your team know what the climate should be? Because if they don't, then you got a communication gap and you need to take care of that. Because you would want your organization to act as if you're not even in the building. They know the climate and they want to uphold it and strengthen it. So spend some time, think about what is the climate that you want people to feel, people to see, people to experience? What is the climate that you want to attract talent to your building? What is the climate that is going to make your students the best in the state? And that's what you need to build. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Take care of yourself and take care of your team. Be sure to follow the Institute on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. At Erskine Charters, we'll have all of these resources, including this podcast, many stories of our schools, and other things. So check us out. The opinions expressed within the content are solely the authors and do not reflect the opinions and beliefs of the Charter Institute at Erskine or its affiliates.